bar graphs. In this video, we're going to talk about when to use a bar graph, as well as how to create the, an awesome bar graph with all the requirements. First of all, let's talk about the difference between a bar graph and the other kind of graph we're going to use in fourth grade, which is a line graph. A bar graph compares counts of different categories. For example, if you asked um, people in our class what their favorite animals were, we could have different categories of dog, cat, and snake, and we could, have the, we could count the number of people that voted for each animal. A line graph, on the other hand, shows change over time. The key word is that a line graph uh, almost always has some sort of measurement and, uh, as time on the left-hand side when you look at the data table. So, for example, if we took the temperature every um, three hours on a certain day, we would have time here, so every three hours we are um, looking at the clock but also looking at the thermometer. And we would draw a line to represent this data because the temperatures are changing over time. When you get ready to make a bar graph, of course you're going to have a data table. You might collect the data on your own into the data table. And here's one that I created in my own house. A data table has a title so that whoever's reading your data can tell what your table is about. It has headings on both columns. So on this column, we're going to have the person that um, whose shoes were counted. On, and on this in this column, we're going to have the number of shoes. We have here these are the categories: myself, Mr. Profit, Adley, and Trip. And on this side, we have the data that was collected. I have 12 shoes. Mr. Profit has eight pairs of shoes. Um, Adley has five pairs of shoes and Trip has two pairs of shoes. We'll come back to that data in a minute. So now let's talk about the steps for creating an awesome bar graph. First of all, you're going to use a ruler to draw a straight x and y axis. Remember that the x axis is the horizontal axis and the y axis is the vertical axis. I remember that because the tail of the y is long and goes up and down like the y axis. So let's do that first step here now on the grid paper that I have. We always want to use a ruler to make a nice straight line so that our bar graph does not look sloppy. So I'm going to create the Y axis, the tall one, and I'm also going to create the X axis. You can always turn your paper um, vertically, but I'm turning it this way because of the camera, and um, either way is fine, either direction. So I've also drawn my X axis here. I've got a straight X and Y axis. All right, let's look at the next step. Now I'm going to create a Y axis scale that counts in multiples of 1, 2, 5, 10, or 100. I'm going to make sure I put the numbers on the lines. And I want to use the smallest possible scale that I can. So if I can make ones fit, I want to use ones. But if ones won't fit in the space that I have going vertically, then I can try twos. If that doesn't fit, I would try fives, tens, or one hundreds. It's important to note that the numbers need to go on the lines. Here's an example. The, the blue lines are showing what our graph paper looks like, and I've put the numbers right on top of that. It is not correct to put them between the lines like you see here. So make sure you put them on the line. So let's do that now. I'm going to start down here at 0 and label my very first line 0. In most cases, you need to start at 0 as well, unless you're told differently. So 0, let's see if 1, 2, if I can, let's see if 1's will fit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Well, if you look back at my data, my biggest amount of shoes was 12. So 16 will definitely be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and count by ones. I'm going to notice that I'm putting the numbers on the lines. All right, now we need to figure out how far we're going to go on the y-axis scale. Let's look at the next step. Step number three says that the scale extends one increment above the greatest recorded piece of data. So since my um, number of shoes was the greatest, which is 12, I want to go one number past that, which is 13. So you can see here 12 will be the height of my bar. I'm going to go one more over that. So I'm going to need to go all the way up to 13. 12 and 13. Good. Now I'm going to leave space before, between, and after the bars. And I'm going to make sure that each bar is the same width and it's straight. So here's a good example. You can see 
that there's space in between each bars and before them. Here's a poor example. The amount of space in between the bars changes, as well as the width of the bars. See, we have a skinny bar, a really fat bar, an even skinnier bar with big spaces in between. So it helps me to think about marking them off ahead of time with some lines. I'm going to skip two, make a bar that's two. Skip two, make a bar that's two. And I'm going to give myself little tiny lines sort of as guidelines to work on later. So these are going to be empty, and then this will be me. I'll skip two lines. So skip two spaces. This will be Mr. Profit. Skip two spaces. This will be Adley. Skip two spaces, and this will be Trip. So I have a space that I'm ready to put my bars, and I've marked it off to make sure that each bar will be the same width and each space will be the same width. The bars and the spaces don't have to be the same. I could have skipped one line in between, but I had enough room to skip two on each. Go ahead and make the bars. Um, remember that I had 12 pairs of shoes, so I'm going to use my ruler to draw all the way up to 12. And you would be working in pencil right now. I'm working in marker so that you can see it. But all of these steps would be done in pencil as we go along. Okay, Mr. Prophet had eight pairs of shoes. So I'm skipping these two lines right here and going to eight. Using my ruler to make sure that they are straight. And you would use a pencil. Okay, Adley had five pairs of shoes. And then Trip had two pairs of shoes. Definitely easy to see who has the most and who has the least when you create a graph like this. Okay, great. Now I'm ready to include a title and label for each axis. Um, so I need a title for the bar graph and then a label for both sides. So um, a title needs to be something that lets the reader of this graph know immediately what kind of data is being displayed. So I'm going to name my, t my bar, um, bar graph Shoes in the Profit House. And this makes it really obvious when we're looking at this bar graph that, that this is what you're looking at. Now I'm going to do an x-axis and I'm going to label each category and the x-axis. So this was me, the next one was Mr. Profit, then it was Adelie and Trip. But it's not enough just to label your categories. You need to say what these things are. Me, Mr. Profit, Adelie and Trip, well we're all people, people in the Profit House. So I'm going to just write Profits. How about profit family members? That's even more descriptive. Profit family members. And then I need to make a y-axis scale. I should have saved more room down here, as you can see. Now I'm going to make a y-axis scale that says what we are um, counting. Well, we're counting pairs of shoes, so that's going to go here. And then finally, I'm going to check for mistakes, then color if desired. So my, my only mistake that I see here, I, would, I wished I had scooted this up a little higher, but I drew my y-axis a little taller than it needs to be. So before I went over any of this in marker or color pencil, I would erase this line up to here. And now I could go ahead and color them in if I wanted to.